I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us again at the Azure Academy. Today, we're going to be talking about Windows Virtual Desktop and how we can scale Virtual Desktop's host pools or add new host pools using the web interface. So if you haven't already, please click on that subscribe button. And it really does give us a hand at the Azure Academy, keeps us promoted with the YouTube algorithm and all that. And don't forget to give us some comments below on things you're interested in or any questions that you have. So let's go right over to the Azure Docs. And the information that we need for today's session is going to be under the how to guides. And we want to create a host pool with PowerShell. Now, we don't have to actually do this with PowerShell. Um, there is a way to do that. I'll show you that. But we're going to actually use the web management interface for this. These are the commands for how to create your entire host pool with PowerShell. But we want the register a virtual machine to the Windows Virtual Desktop preview host pool. And I'll have a direct link for this in the comment section below so you can get here quickly. Basically, the steps we have to go through today is we have to create our virtual machines. Once we've done that, we have to log on and join the domain. Then we can install these two different tools, the virtual desktop agent and the virtual desktop agent bootloader. And then after we install those tools, we'll be off and running. So let me show you what we've got so far. So in the Azure portal, we'll go to our resource groups and I've got one here for session hosts and I've got four VMs that are currently built. These first two are Windows 10. These second two are Windows Server. Now in the web management UI, I've already got my tenant created as well as a host pool. And this host pool has in it my two Windows 10 systems. So if I go to the web interface for virtual desktop and we connect and we log in, here we are on our Windows 10 desktop. So let me log off here now that we've proved that that works. And let's go back to the web interface. So as you can see here, I've got one session host not allowed to take any more connections. And then I've got the one that we were just logged on to. So I'm going to set that one here to not allow new sessions and hit update. And that is set to no. So this entire host pool is not accepting new connections. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a new host pool and we'll give it a name and we'll hit next. And now we have to choose if we want this to be persistent or non-persistent desktops. And I'll pick non-persistent. And this is that same basic setting as pooled or personal. And then the number of users will give it four. And there is our server's host pool. So inside the host pool, of course, there are no hosts yet. So we want to add those. So we've got our two Windows servers that are here that we want to add. So first thing before I do this in the portal, I want to show you this in PowerShell because uh, once you do it in one place, then it won't work in the other. And you'll see why in a second. We've got a real simple PowerShell script here. I just have a variable for my tenant name and my host pool. And so let's enter those. And now notice here I've got some comments and the comments basically say that if you've done this step already or if you've done it in the portal, then this step will not work again. You will get an error and that will be an error that will last for 72 hours because when you generate a new token, it lasts for 72 hours. And I will also show you how this works in the portal. All right. So let's generate a new token. And there is our token, so we can copy that. And then if you have already generated a token in PowerShell or within the portal, you can always run this export token function, which would give you that token all over again. So let's look at this in the web portal. So when we hit the button to add a new host, you can see the token is already generated here. Let's create a new host pool, and then we'll hit next. And we'll make it the same settings as we did before. All right, there is our test host pool. So let's go to hosts and we'll hit add. Now you see here it says no tokens are available because we need to generate one. So we'll pick a date here on the calendar. Then we'll push the generate key at the bottom. And now we have a token. So if we take this test host pool, AA test, and go back to PowerShell and we change our name here, we'll enter that as our variable. And let's clear the screen and then run this new token command again, then we get a error. And that's because we've already generated this. So in 72 hours from now, this command will work. But we can, again, as I said, run the export command. And there is our token. 
So I'm logged on here to our domain controller and you can see that both of our servers have been joined to the domain already. And there is one more thing that we need to do before we can install our agents. So we'll go to the add new server role and we want to add a remote desktop services role and we'll just hit next and it'll also give us then the remote desktop services and we need to add a session host. So we'll add the features for that and we'll repeat that on our other server. Okay, and the feature installs complete, but we need to do a reboot. So we'll click start and restart. And as you can see now, our remote desktop services are installed on both of our targets. So let's get rid of the server manager. And on the desktops, you can see I've got our agent and our bootloader. So first thing we're gonna run is the agent and we'll hit next on the agent and agree to the terms of course after you've read the license agreement and you can see that it has an invalid registration token so this is where we need to go back to the portal and let's copy our token and then go back to the servers and we'll just paste the token and then hit next and install and that'll just take a minute or so to run so all the things we're doing to add the agents this way is done by the template that you deploy through the Azure portal automatically, but this is just the manual process. So you can use that original process to build out your initial host pool. And then when you decide, oh, it's not enough, I need to scale up, you can build an additional host pool, or you can use this method to scale out a existing host pool. All right, so those two things have been done. And if we go back to the portal and we hit refresh here, we can see that our two servers are here now, but they have no heartbeat and no uptime. So what has to happen now is it's gonna communicate with the service and let's take a look quickly at PowerShell and we'll run a quick command to get our session hosts from PowerShell. And you can see that our status is available on both of these hosts. And now we are showing a heartbeat here. So you can see this diagnostic information from either PowerShell or the portal. And if we refresh, now we've got a heartbeat and an uptime. So now before we try to log in, we have to go to the app group and that's here by default, the desktop applications group. And what we need here is some users. So let's hit plus to add a user. Okay, and now that we're added, let's go back to the portal and we'll refresh. And now we've got our server desktop. So let's go and log in. And because it's the first login, it's got to set up our user profile, which you could store centrally using FS Logics, and we'll link a description to that in our card section, as well as the video again on the WVD management interface if you haven't done that. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at how we can scale out our host pools in Windows Virtual Desktop. And we can do that through PowerShell or the web management interface. You just generate yourself a token, which is good for 72 hours. And then you can go in with the tools that are available through the portal. And we'll have those linked in the description and then get those installed so that you can register any VM in the cloud to run as a session host in Windows Virtual Desktop. So if you thought this video was good, please click on that thumbs up as well as the subscribe button. Those things really tell YouTube that uh, you like our content and that they should be serving it up to more folks, which would help out other people to learn Azure as well. And don't forget to click on that notification bell if you'd like to receive an email when our videos come out, which is roughly once a week. And give us some comments below on things you're interested in so we can answer your questions and give you guys what it is you're looking for in Azure. Thanks for joining us today and happy learning.